Pete Webber, a calm and composed guy whenever he's on TV. Well, maybe in a parallel universe because the Webber we know and love, or hate in some people's case, was sure to be in everyone's face at every opportunity on TV. He gave us so many memorable moments on television and with 37 titles including 10 majors, it's not really a surprise he has so many great moments throughout his career. However, he had his fair share of struggles and in this video, we're going to be looking at some of his worst moments on television. These are what I consider to be the top five worst moments and don't forget to check out some of the other top five worst moments videos that I've done so far for other PBA players. So without further ado, let's jump straight into number five, the 2009 Plastic Ball Championship. Maybe a little selfish there. That's not going to roll hard enough. No, it's not. Right lane. Oh boy. Ah, All righty then. Come on, hit. Yeah. Oh, Yahtzee yeah. action for Carter. <laughs> Crack open a six pack. Six in a row after an opening spare. Carter in command of this title match. At this point in his career, Weber was having a really rough time on TV. He last won a title at the 2007 US Open and after this, he was making TV shows. He just couldn't seem to win a match, let alone win a title. It was a rough period for him, but at the 2009 Plastic Ball Championship, there was a glimmer of hope. As the name suggests, players were only allowed to use plastic balls in this event and Weber made the show and was in the semi-final match against Chris Barnes. It wasn't the best of starts as he went through the nose for the 4-6-10 in the first frame, but he would quickly find his groove as he threw 10 consecutive strikes to finish with a 2-69, which is extremely impressive with a plastic ball. He moved on to the title match to play Jeff Carter and it would be the battle of the gloves, but Carter would fire six strikes in a row and an open frame in the fifth for Weber would put him in a pretty big hole in this match and Carter would win the title and Pete's title drought would not end. Number four, the 2010 Dick Weber Open. Walter Ray Williams Jr. with the lead. Here's Pete Weber in the fifth. Leaves the 210. Wow. Another Brooklyn yeah. strike. A strike is a strike, but that's still a concern for PD Dub. Absolutely. And that's his third, I believe it's his third Brooklyn in two matches. So that's a sign of not being lined up, and that's the last thing you want to see. You know, the layman will look at it and go, well, yeah, but he struck. Alrighty well, then. guess what? You can't rely on throwing Brooklyn strikes to get yourself back in the match. Big four, big trouble. Lane's been my nemesis all day. Why stop now? Pete made the telecast at a tournament named after his late father, the 2010 Dick Webber Open. Now, Pete was still looking to end his title drought as it had now been three years since his last win and he'd had many TV struggles since then. I'm sure Webber would have been extremely motivated to win this one as it was named after his father and it looked like he had a chance as he won match number two against Bill O'Neill. However, match three, he ended up facing his old nemesis, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Pete struggled in this one to find the pocket consistently and Walter had the front five, which was enough to give him a good lead that he managed to hold on to. Walter would advance to the title match, but did lose to Mike Fagan. Overall, this was a pretty bad moment for Pete as it was just another case of him running into Walter Ray. Number three, the 2003 World Championship. The direction he wants the ball to go in. Seven frames. Strike carries up 10 pins. Oh, 10 oh, pins. Man, Jesus Christ. I looked up intensity in the dictionary God. and I saw a picture of Pete. Fixed shots. Does he have a second in him? Oh. 10 pins. And Walter Ray Williams Jr. advances to the finals. 
just like that. This event was featured in the documentary A League of Ordinary Gentlemen and Weber managed to make the TV show. He would face Walter Ray in the semis and was determined for some revenge as Walter had a 5-2 winning record against Weber. But Weber really struggled with Carey and you can see how frustrated he got at one point. Walter managed to carry slightly better than Weber overall, however Weber still had a chance to win if he got all three strikes in the 10th frame. He got the first, but his next shot would leave yet another 10 pin. And once again, Weber would fail to defeat Walter Ray Williams Jr. Number 2. The 1987 US Open ball full fingertip grip tremendous power and feet on the left lane with the three six down the hook Something that has not happened to Pete all week long. As I said, we had an ideal lane condition here for the U.S. Open. Here's this solid hit. Six pins, flies around the ten pin. The top of the world. Del Ballard. And his parents in Richardson, Texas, and his friends. Imagine, they feel as he feels here, 100,000 bucks and the United States Open title to go with it. Weber was seeking his first major title at the 87 US Open and he faced Dale Ballard Jr. in the title match. Pete put up a great effort here but just couldn't carry the 10 pin consistently and he was putting down some really great shots in general. Meanwhile Ballard was bowling well himself but he was just getting the pins to fall, generally hitting them light and mixing them up. Pete did get pretty unlucky here as he bowled a great game but he would win his first major just three months later and would get his revenge on Ballard during the infamous final where Ballard threw the last ball in the gutter and handed Pete the win. And number one, the 2006 Japan Cup. Hairs are standing up on my arms. Front five for each. Looks for six in a row, didn't like it on the release. Oh. And that's why four seven. I think right now Petey's in one of those situations where he can't miss if he wants to win. This has to strike. It does not. Two pin for Pete. There's ten. Not just a strike. That's ten in the pit. High flush. How about eleven? Well, he looks good. Oh! Are you kidding me? Seven pin. That's about the only thing that could stop Walter Ray. And he's about to get a sea of flowers, trophies, balloons, confetti. Now, I put this at number one for a couple of reasons. Firstly, this was the fifth and final time that Weber would face Walter Ray in a title match. And this loss meant that he had lost all five. Now, he had a really bad record as well in general against Walter Ray on TV, and Walter just always seemed to find a way to beat Pete on television. He lost to Walter earlier that year in the 2006 World Championship, so he would definitely have been eager for some revenge. The second reason I put this at number one is that with a win at this event, Walter Ray would win his 42nd tour title and therefore surpass Earl Anthony and his all time title record. Although, Earl Anthony's titles would increase to 43 due to a change in the PBA as to which tournaments classified as official titles. But even so, at the time, Pete had a chance to finally beat Walter Ray in a final and stop him from beating Earl's record. Now, to be fair, there wasn't much Pete could do as Walter was on fire and did bolt a 289 game. However, Pete was keeping up with him for the first half of the match, getting the front five but he made a bad shot in the sixth going inside and went through the nose. He struck after this, but then it was a pretty much a must strike situation and it was another wayward shot on the left lane. Walter would carry on striking until the 11th shot that somehow left a seven pin. 
Overall, I think this match just summed up Pete's performances against Walter throughout his career. Even when Pete bowled really well, Walter just bowled even better. And that will be it for today's video. This was a little bit of a tricky one to choose the top five because there was just so many moments um, I could have chosen from because Pete over the years just made that many shows. But yeah, maybe you think there were some moments in there that should have been on this list and weren't. If that's the case, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you thought of my top five selections. I'm going to be doing a top five best of Pete Weber video that will be uploaded very, very soon. And I'll also carry on working my way through other players as well. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching and that will be all from me for today. And as always, thank you bowling fans and see you all next time.